Good morning, West in the World. Welcome to your review video for Thursday, October the 3rd, following our lecture this morning on the scientific revolution. In class, we made one final loop backwards in time to the years building up to and surrounding the, uh, the year 1542, when Nicholas Copernicus publishes his seminal work on the revolution of the heavenly spheres and the debate that it introduced into Western society about heliocentrism, a sun-centric model of the solar system versus geocentrism, the earth-centric model of the universe that had been accepted and widely taught for nearly 2,000 years by the time Copernicus writes his book. Why did we say that any of this matters? Well, the main reason why it proves to be of such significance is because the Roman Church has by 1542, adopted or been teaching those ideas of Aristotle and Ptolemy, not as interesting ways of thinking about the physical world, but as official church dogma. They've assigned theological significance to this understanding of the universe, where the earth is at the center, reflecting humanity's central position within it. Gal the work of Copernicus, Galileo, and others then is a fundamental challenge to the way that they understand themselves. And because it comes at this time concurrent with the Reformation, it ignites a wider crisis. It's for this reason that people like Galileo are going to suffer rather severe persecution at the hands of the church in Rome. But the scientific revolution is much more than just the source of some Western division between scientific and religious thinking. It's going to introduce all new patterns of thought into Western life. And that's where we're going to be going next, as we turn our attention to the ways in which the scientific revolution introduces new thinking about politics and economics, new ideas that are going to fundamentally challenge especially the theories of absolute monarchy that have dominated Europe well into the 17th century. The results are going to be quite literally revolutionary as we get into the Enlightenment and the age of the French Revolution. But those are matters we'll be discussing next week. Have a good weekend, everybody. See you on Tuesday.